Welcome back everybody, this is the Johnny Mayor and I am continuing with Resident Evil 2, the Claire A scenario. So last time we got a couple more items, we found the last of the precinct keys. You'll also notice I have the lighter and also the grenade launcher with explosive rounds and that is because we are going to need both of those in this episode. Now we also had a little side quest with Sherry where I was able to get her mauled viciously by doggies. And that made my day. I always enjoy running past dogs, but also having useless characters get harmed. It's kind of like in Resident Evil 4 when I play that. It's always fun finding the ways that you can actually kill Ashley. Yes, that's what I do. But now that we head back into this area, the doggies have become lay lickers, if you'll pardon my Franglish, which of course is French and English. So that's why I have the grenade launcher here with explosive rounds. Two of those shots should take out each of the liquors, and there are two of them in this hallway. So before we take on the other one, we're gonna use our brand new club key on this door right here, which is the autopsy room. Now in Claire's B scenario, we come into this room and uh, there's nothing in here. But in the A scenario, we are very special and privileged to have all of these very suspicious looking zombies just kind of hanging out on the floor. So we're just gonna slowly walk past all of them. And uh, yeah, we have some uh, drawers here. I always liked how that little door fell off there. And uh, what we need is in this little cabinet here, that is the red key card. And then we are gonna run as quickly as we can, go around this corner, veer sharply to Claire's right, and then veer back to the left. And that'll allow us to get by all of the zombies without having to fight them. Otherwise, if you do not do that little path, if you don't head to our left and Claire's right and then hook back to Claire's left and our right, uh, basically what will happen is one of the zombies will grab you, uh, munch on you, which will give the other ones time to come at you, and you may die. Or you can use a whole ton of ammo on those zombies and we're basically never going in that room again, so there's really no reason to waste that ammo. Now we do want to take out this liquor. He has a bad habit of going around the corner. He does that almost every time when you shoot him the first time. And uh, we want to sneak up on him to shoot him the second time. Now liquors will not activate in this game if you slowly approach them until you get very close to them. So that's kind of a little bit of a tip. Uh, they're very susceptible to sound. Um, so as long as you're not running, uh, they won't get super aggressive. Now, if you get near them, they will, because then they'll sense you. But uh, as long as you're a ways away, they will not come at you. But if you run, then they will. They will go immediately into attack mode and come for you. Now we cannot advance the plot this way. Uh, we cannot do anything about that van there. So what we're going to do is just pick up the green herb that's right here. And we will head back towards the door. This uh, little parking garage will come into play once we actually head over to Leon's B scenario. Now there are two more rooms in the basement area for us to explore. Uh, we have to go to the first one, which is a little bit of a kind of a steam room or utility room. And in this room, there is one green herb, there's also a map, and then there is also a little puzzle that we have to do. So we will pick up the green herb, of course. And then we will head down to the electrical puzzle. So this is a reserve power control panel. So what we need to do is get the little arrow or pointer on the power panel into the 80 to, well, just to the 80 range. Uh, you don't want to overdo it because that'll cause a short. And all you have to do for the switches is alternate them. So start with the first one up, second one down, third one up, fourth one down, and the final one up. And that will get you to 80, which is the magic number. So that activates a little card reader, which of course we will use our red key card on. 
We'll also grab the police map for the basement. So we have one more room to explore. And this is a completely optional area. Well, a lot of this is optional. Like, you don't have to come into any of these rooms if you don't want to as Claire. There's nothing essential in here. But, there is going to be something in this last room that you will pretty much need for the B scenario. This is the armory or weapon storage. We read about it in various memos, that that's where they ended up putting everything with a special lock. And they told us a little bit about how to get the stuff. So uh, we're gonna go in here. There is some ammo for us, which is certainly appreciated. Now we have some handgun bullets, two packs of them, and then we also have some bow gun bolts. Then there are some special items located in one of the cabinets at the end of the room. Now the special items are a carryover thing. So basically there's two things. There's a side pack and also a machine gun. The side pack will increase your carrying capacity by two, and the machine gun, of course, is a weapon, a submachine gun, or just a regular machine gun. I think the submachine gun is a different weapon in this game. Um, and if you take one of them, then it will not be available to the person during the B scenario. Now, we want both of those for our B scenario, because the B scenario is a little bit more difficult than the A scenario, especially the boss battles. So we're going to leave both of those for Leon. Now, it is generally a good thing to take the side pack for Claire, so it's not a bad thing to take it. Um, I wouldn't take the machine gun. Claire gets enough weapons. But uh, the side pack can be worth it, because Claire has so many weapons that take up two spots in her inventory in terms of the weapon and the ammo or just the weapon itself. She actually has quite a few weapons, some special weapons in fact, that will take up two inventory slots. So if you want to utilize all those weapons, then you're going to need as much inventory space as you can get. Now this is the second room that we can access with the club key. And we have a soldier down there, or police officer. I used one of my herbs because I want to pick up those acid rounds. And then there is a diary in here. Not quite as uh, infamous as the itchy, itchy tasty tasty diary from the first game uh, but this one is talking about a guy who was a patrolman and uh, basically there's something weird going on in the clock tower uh, which is where I believe we get the last of the half crests or stones um, and then he also talks about a man that basically designed the chess set lock set for the door in Leon scenario because he likes chess so much. Ah, now it makes sense, right? Logic. So they were planning on playing chess, uh, but they're not feeling so good. <laughs> Wonder what's wrong, right? Yeah, we know. They're infected. So Thomas ends up being a pretty good player. Um, but obviously they're both kind of feeling the um, effects of this virus that's spreading throughout Raccoon City. And so they're probably not going to do much better for much longer. No, he's not okay. <laughs> As we'll find out in the next page. And of course, the line at the end there now means a little something different with the Walking Dead series. So he literally looked like the Walking Dead. But now our diary writer is, of course, not feeling great himself. So he will also turn into a zombie. Or maybe he took his life. I don't know. It could be this guy that's at our feet right here. This police officer. Uh, you know, he has the bite marks on his shoulder. So that probably indicates he became a zombie. But uh, we don't know for sure. Maybe he took his own life before he transformed. I don't know. But all right, that is two of the three club key doors. We only have one more to go to. And that is way back in the little hallway near where we got the yellow stone, which was the serpent stone, I believe. Uh, and also where the liquor came busting through the interrogation room mirror. Now, if you watch, 
on the ground over here, this zombie, his little head will follow you, and that's because he is actually alive. Or undead. So if you go over there, he will grab your feet and bite you. So basically, I don't want to waste the ammo on him, so I'm not going to, but I think it's interesting that they made his head follow you if you run by. So we're going to head through these very short and narrow hallways. Thankfully, we cleaned them all out last episode. The only thing we have to do is go all the way to the end, and that will be the last of our club key doors. So that'll allow us to discard this useless key. And we want to equip our grenade launcher because there is a liquor in here. Because somehow liquors are appearing everywhere. Suddenly it's liquors. So two shots. Should do it. Very rarely, if you don't hit them straight on with a shot, it'll take three. Um, but usually two will take them out. And this is the kind of media room where they made speeches and stuff like that. Now if you go look at the painting at the back of the room, it'll give you a clue about what you're supposed to do here. Basically you need to light the little furnace, and you need to turn on these little lamps or faucets in a particular order. And that is the middle one, which is 12, the far right one, which is 13, and then the far left one, which is 11. And that corresponds to Jack, Queen, and King. And so the little puzzle will tell you that. And uh, that makes a little cog actually fall out of the painting. And we need that cog to get the last of the stones. Now we are out of inventory space. If you took the side pack, you won't be. So there is a film here. And there's also a first aid spray behind the desk. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to continue onward. We're gonna get back to the main area of the police station where you come in through the front door. And I'm gonna come all the way back here off camera. I'm gonna pick up those items. And then what I'm gonna do is head over to the dark room with my other film that I got in the evidence room. And I'm actually gonna develop both of those films so that you can see them. Because I do want this to be, you know, fairly complete of a playthrough. I want to show off pretty much everything that I'm aware of. You know, except the crazy side quest stuff that you have to do. Like, I'm not going to do any of the specialty quests like Hunk or Tofu or anything like that. Because that's just a little bit too hardcore for me. But we will do the other stuff, which includes showing off some film. Good old film, huh? In this age of uh, digital cameras, we don't use much film anymore. At least not recreationally. But I'll see you in a bit. Alright, so we are in the dark room. I have my two film. And then I also grabbed the crank out of the box. So we are going to develop both films. First one is film B. It's a zombie, I guess. So pretty quick regression. And uh, before he turned, he had skin agitation and nausea. Huh. And then R. Lambert. Hmm. And then the second film is a big arm. <laughs> with the eyeball on its shoulder. Okay. Well, there you go. So now I'll meet you back in the entranceway. All right, so now that we did that, what we need to do is head upstairs. So I'm gonna use my little ladder shortcut. There is another liquor at the top of this ladder. So we want our grenade launcher. And there will be actually one more liquor after that that we have to kill. In the immediate future, anyway. So let's see if we can do it with two. Yes, even though we got him in the butt the second time. Apparently the butt was deadly. And now we're going to head through this door here. The last liquor is actually up on the third floor, which we do have to go to now. And now we're actually going to activate the little scene with the zombies coming through the windows. So that was one of the shutters I could have used the cord on. I decided to not do that. I used it on the hallway back near the basement. 
Uh, both of them are basically irrelevant. We're not going to head down either of those hallways again. But uh, I figured I'd use it just because that's the purpose of it. They're much more relevant in Leon's scenario, especially his A scenario. But we are on the third floor and there is a liquor right here. So let's use our last two explosive rounds, hopefully to kill it. Thank goodness. It would suck to have to take it out with my handgun. But uh, now we are out of explosive rounds. That's unfortunate. We still have quite a few acid rounds and fire rounds for our grenade launcher. So what we need to do in here is use our crank. That'll bring down some stairs for us. And you can do this as soon as you get the crank, so if you want to do it right away once you get the crank in the library area, that's fine. It's just you can't do the second part of the puzzle. And uh, you will have to get past that liquor. And it may or may not respawn. I'm not sure. I, I don't usually do it at this point in the game. I mean, I wait till this point. I don't do it earlier. The next thing we need to do is use our cog. And that'll allow us to activate a switch. And this will open up a part of the wall where we can get the last of the half crests or stones. And that is it. We have all three of them. So now we have both halves of the blue stone. We have the red stone and the yellow stone. Which means we can now access the area behind the chief's desk. So what we're going to do to end up this episode is head back to the save room that's right near the chief's office. And next time we're going to install all of those stones into the wall. And we'll see what happens once we do that. Chances are something good will happen, right? Or bad. I don't know. Guess we'll find out. I mean, I do know, obviously. And you may all know, too. I'm sure many of you who are watching this have played this game before and or watched my other LP of the Leon A and Claire B scenario, so you probably have a good idea of what's going to happen. It is not much different than that. But... For sure, we will find out in my next episode, once we take care of all of that good stuff and continue onward towards one of our first boss battles. Spoiler alert. <laughs> yes, we have a boss battle coming up. It's very exciting. I'm looking forward to it. So as always, viewers, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you all next time when we take on a boss. So long.